Nout siam, nchala cho siam, tam senet snat siam, cho tam wixen, cho klamitsen. Hello, friends and relatives. Uh, my name is Tam Lutz. I'm a Lummi tribal member and I greeted you in my tribal language, Klami Chasen. Before we begin our webinar on the Weave Northwest RFA, we'd like to acknowledge and honor the land, the people who resided here since time immemorial, the Multnomah, the Wasco, the Cowlitz, the Kathlamet, Kath the Clackamas, the bands of Chinook, Tualatin, Kalapuya, and Malala and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River, harvesting our traditional foods that were here so plentiful. We take this, this time, this opportunity to thank our creator for the opportunity to be the original and the present caretakers of this land, its resources, and our sovereign foods. We'd also like to introduce ourselves to all of you uh, Victoria Warren Mears is not here today. She's our principal investigator of the WEF Northwest team and also our epicenter director. Uh, my name, as I said, is Tam Lutz. I'm a Lummi tribal member. I've been working here for about 20 years at the health board. I am uh, the maternal child health programs director as well as the, the director of the WEF Northwest team. Hi, I'm Janine Dankovchik, and I'm the program evaluator for our Weave Northwest project. Hi hey there, my name is Chelsea Jensen. I am the project assistant for the Weave Northwest team. Hey there, Nora Frank Buckner, Nez Perce tribal member and Klamath descendant, and I am the food sovereignty project manager for Weave. Uh, Candice uh, Jimenez is also part of our team, and she manages the breastfeeding um, area of our project and Chandra Wilson just joined us as our tobacco project specialist and she works on trainings and technical assistance and overseeing um, the tobacco subaward. For those of you that don't know the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board, the Portland Area Indian Health Board serves the tribes of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Our mission is to eliminate health disparities, improve the quality of life of American Indians and Alaska Natives by supporting Northwest tribes in their delivery of culturally appropriate, high quality health care. Um, within our health board, we also have the Northwest Tribal Epidemiology Center, and it's one of 13 national centers charged with collecting tribal health status data, evaluating data, providing data monitoring and delivering, um, uh, helping tribes deliver uh, or improving healthcare systems and identifying local priorities uh, for tribes. Um, we've been doing this since 1997. We were one of the first uh, original epicenters uh, and we have a long history of uh, many successful health research surveillance uh, and surveillance projects. Um, Weave Northwest um, was funded, or the, the Northwest Tribal Epi Center was funded for Weave Northwest with funding available for the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention under the Good Health and Wellness uh, in Indian Country Initiative, which we call GWIC. Um, GWIC is one of the largest investments that CDC has made uh, in tribes for chronic disease prevention. Uh, just a little overview uh, in what GWIC um, entails is that GWIC's long-term goals is to decrease cardiovascular disease and stroke, uh, commercial tobacco use, obesity, and type two diabetes for American Indians and Alaska Natives. Uh, the focus of um, achieving these long-term goals is to utilize policy system and environment uh, change projects, which Janine will go over in more detail, um, as well as using culturally relevant and appropriate prevention activities. A little um, a snapshot on what our RFA timeline will look like. Uh, we opened our RFA Monday, August 17th. Uh, we, um, we are available at any time. Uh, our staff is available by phone or email. Uh, if you would like to talk to us about this RFA, please uh, contact Chelsea, our project assistant, uh, at the following email, cjensen at mpaihb.org, or 
or call her to schedule an appointment with one of the topic area experts, uh, Nora, uh, Chandra, or Candice. Uh, and that can be, you can co contact uh, Chelsea at 503-975-0921. The RFA will be closing uh, September 30th at 11.59 p.m. So what are we funding? We're funding five subcontracts up to $25,000 each uh, to federally recognized tribes in Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. The projects must use policy system or environment change approaches, and they must address one of the following health areas. Uh, food system change to prevent with the long-term goal of, of preventing obesity, breastfeeding promotion and support, or commercial tobacco use. So I'll hand this off to Janine to talk a little bit about PSE approaches. Thanks, Tam. Yes, yeah, so as Tam mentioned, uh, the Good Health and Wellness in Indian Country Initiative is really focused on policy, systems change, and environment changes to prevent chronic disease. Um, and the reason for that is that we know that we can encourage people and educate people about how to make healthy choices to prevent chronic disease in their lives, but sometimes there are a lot of external factors that make it really difficult for, those, for people to make those choices. For example, if your environment makes it hard to change your behavior, if there are policies in place that make it easier for people to keep doing things the way they've been used to doing them, or if there are systems that prevent you from changing. So we know that where you live affects how you live, which is why PSE changes uh, the context in which people make their decisions about their health behaviors. And that is um, what we're looking to change is these upstream um, effects for people to be able to have an easier time making good health decisions. So policy change could be passing a law, an ordinance, a tribal resolution, a regulation or a rule, something that would be designed to guide or influence behavior. Um, it doesn't have to be a formal policy. Uh, and, and we know in Indian country that policy takes a lot of different, um, takes on a lot of different styles. But policy change uh, is one of the things that we're looking at with this RFA. Systems change um, could be any kind of change to the health system, food system, changes made in your organizational procedures, such as personnel, hiring for new positions, or uh, building capacity or training um, current positions to do other, serve other roles, resource allocation, programs, and oftentimes systems change and policy change work hand in hand. And then environmental change, so changes to the built environment that actually encourage or support people to be able to make healthy decisions. Uh, for example, we have many um, projects under Weave Northwest that work on community gardens and bringing uh, greater access to healthy and traditional foods within the community. This is just one example, but built environment change is another, PS, the, the E of the PSC approaches. So it's important to remember when thinking about applying for a Weave Northwest um, funding that there's the difference between programs and policy systems and environment change. Programs are often one-time events. They're usually additive to an existing policy or system that's in place. They're usually focused on making changes at the individual level. Um, so an individual person making a change they're usually short-term and non-sustaining. Policy systems and environment changes, on the other hand, tend to be sustaining and ongoing. Um, they're more foundational changes, usually focusing on making changes at the community level and more long-term. So some examples of how you can see the comparison and the difference between these. For example, in a school setting, you might have a program or an event to celebrate National Nutrition Month if you're looking at addressing obesity. That would be a one-time um, event and it could raise awareness and it could bring some good attention, but it wouldn't be a sustaining change. Whereas a policy systems or environment change for a school would be something like adding fruits and vegetables to the options for students to choose at all tribal schools. Um, in a community setting, you might be looking at something like hosting a bike ride or a parade or um, meals for seniors, a one-time event like that or a program like that wouldn't necessarily be the right focus for a WEAVE um, subaward. 
but something like implementing complete streets or a dog ordinance policy, that would be a policy change that would ensure that the environment was safe for people to, um, to actually be active. Or enhancing an existing community garden would be an environment change that would improve access to healthy foods or traditional foods. For a work site, um, a one-time program like holding a health screening for all your staff would maybe not be appropriate for a, a WEAVE subcontract, but establishing a worksite wellness program, so making a systems change to your worksite policy uh, or a system change or policy change in your worksite to increase physical activity and nutrition would be more of the PSE approach that we'd be looking for. Or in the healthcare setting, hosting a health fair would be a one-off event, whereas implementing a policy for tribal clinic healthcare professionals to screen for tobacco use would be a policy change and a health systems change. So it's those bigger kind of long-term upstream approaches that um, we're really looking for here. And I will hand it off to Nora to talk about the first category of um, chronic disease prevention that we are um, requesting applications for, which is addressing obesity through food systems change. Awesome, thank you, Janine. So um, projects under this activity area seek to prevent obesity through improving access to healthy and traditional foods. So food sovereignty and food systems change focus activities should select this area. Some potential projects include, but are definitely not limited, um, are the food co-development to distribute food at places like farmers markets, schools, childcare settings, tribal enterprises, etc developing and or expanding community gardens or model farms, restoring traditional food habitats, um, and also food sovereignty or traditional slash healthy foods, media or education, as long as they're in support of a PSC change like the ones listed above. All projects under this area must have a medium term goal of increasing the number or percentage of places offering healthy and traditional foods within the community and or traditional foods. Thanks. Um, also to note um, on the other slide, sorry. <laughs> um, so applicants under this area are encouraged to participate in the Northwest Tribal Food Sovereignty Coalition. And if you have questions about um, this category in particular, I will be your point person to contact. So projects under this activity um, seek to prevent obesity through increasing continuity of care or community support for breastfeeding. And some of those potential projects may include developing or expanding peer breastfeeding counselor trainings and programs, establishing connections and or MOUs between hospitals and tribal clinics, WIC or other partners to increase access to baby friendly and culturally competent birthing rooms for tribal mothers and strengthen connection between prenatal care, delivery and tribal services for new mothers developing tribal policies to support encourage, and encourage breastfeeding, such as paid breaks for milk expression, and breastfeeding media and education campaign, again, um, as long as they're, they're in support of a PSC change. This, is, um, this project will have a short-term goal of increasing the number of places that implement culturally adapted continuity of care, community support strategies to promote and support breastfeeding. And the medium term goal is um, increasing the number of mothers who use these services. Uh, applicants under this area are encouraged to act, participate in the Breastfeeding Coalition. And if you have any questions about this category, then Candice will be your point person. So category three, um, this activity seeks to reduce the prevalence of commercial tobacco use tobacco-free policies and practices. Again, the potential projects may include implementing commercial tobacco-free policies or flavored vape restrictions, providing commercial tobacco cessation training for community providers and clinical staff, improving health system to increase screenings and referrals to commercial tobacco cessation treatment, creating tribal cessation training in conjunction with Indian Health Service, incorporating traditional cultural activities, medicines into tobacco cessation programs, and again, developing education and our media campaigns around commercial tobacco, vaping health risks, if it's in support of those PSE changes. The medium term goal 
is increasing the number of places in the community that implement commercial tobacco free policies or increasing the number of commercial tobacco users who receive cessation interventions. Um, and if you have any questions on this category, then Chandra is your point person. All right, so we'll give it back to Tam on budget. Great, just a few notes about the budget. Um, it is a one-year budget, and again, no more than $25,000. There's a budget template provided as part of the RFA for you to use. Um, you may include uh, assessments or trainings as part of your budget, although it's not um, required, uh, but that you will be um, having some sort of um, evaluation plan and Janine will work with you um, should you be selected um, uh, to be funded. Potential trainings can be included um, as long as they're supporting your PSC change, uh, but they may include uh, uh, trainings such as follows food sovereignty assessments or food policy development trainings, breastfeeding peer counselor trainings, tobacco cessation or prevention policy development. In your budget justification, you should include uh, detail on who your personnel, if you are asking for personnel um, support, you should provide their title, uh, their salary, their fringe, uh, the time that is going to be spent um, as part of this uh, proposal uh, and what their role or responsibility will be in terms of the project proposed. Uh, you can fund consultant costs. You can provide number of hours to, or total contract amount, um, roles and, and roles and responsibility of, of that consultant. The equipment, uh, you can only provide equipment under $5,000. Um, details, it, it, more details can be found on page 11 of the RFA. Uh, training costs can be included as well as supplies. Uh, CDC has been um, pretty um, flexible and generous in terms of uh, uh, including uh, costs to support um, COVID related supplies as they relate to your activities. So if you need masks because you're having an in-person activity or hand sanitizer for your activities or you are now you're delivering an online training and you need to purchase a few um, um, Amazon um, Fire uh, tablets, those are all allowable expenses um, as we know now. I, you know, there, there may be uh, costs for travel. I'm assuming given the COVID-19 setting, it might just be um, travel, uh, local travel that's included. Um, applicants uh, should provide a timeline of activities and how they're related to the overall objectives of your project. Um, each objective and activity should also include anticipated evaluation outcomes, and Janine will go over that in more detail about how they'll be measured. Uh, the scope of work uh, that you create will be based on this uh, work plan. So for evaluation, uh, we, have, we don't have a section within the RFA where you need to give a detailed evaluation plan but we would like you within the work plan template to think about your anticipated evaluation outcomes and measures. And there is a section within that template to include those as they tie, as Tam mentioned, as they tie to your activities. Uh, so for each activity, you should be thinking about what you really wanna see change in your community um, as a result of this activity and how will you know if it had changed? So thinking ahead to um, what kind of evaluation outcomes you may have. Um, we will provide further guidance to help you to formally formalize those evaluation measures, identify data sources, create your data collection plan for analysis for evaluation and analyze and help you report those evaluation results. Um, so we want to make sure that um, your evaluation plan covers both what's going to be the most relevant and credible information for you to really make use of so that your evaluation is practical and uh, useful for your community. But of course, also 
uh, it has to address the goals that are listed in the RFA for each selected project activity area. Those are CDC required evaluation measures. So you should keep keeping those in mind as you're developing your work plan and thinking about your activities to make sure that um, your activities are working towards those outcomes as well as whatever other outcomes are important for you all in your community. Um, so again, put, you'll put that into your work plan. Uh, it doesn't have to be finalized, but give us an idea of what you're thinking in terms of evaluation. And then when, if you are awarded, we'll help you to, um, to polish that and turn it into an evaluation plan that then you can report on. Um, and we will provide you with a, uh, a report template to complete, complete quarterly with your evaluation. If you have any questions, again, um, contact Chelsea at 503-975-0921 uh, or email us at weave at mpaihb.org. Um, Chelsea can either set up a call uh, with one of us um, in that, um, the content, ex content experts. Uh, also their emails are provided here uh, for each one of those um, areas of um, of um, uh, topic areas, uh, either uh, food sovereignty, tobacco, or breastfeeding. Thank you. And we look forward to reading your proposals. Hi, Shkessian.